Well, hello everyone and welcome to our webinar, Enhance IT Security with Mobile Device Management. Two housekeeping points before we get started. The session is being recorded and you will receive a link over the next few days by email. Secondly, please submit your questions throughout the presentation in the Q&A and Q &A section, and we will be addressing these towards the end of the webinar. Regarding selecting and optimizing MDM solutions, we couldn't ask for a better speaker to explore this topic with you. Tim Tassone is the Senior Principal Solutions Architect at Barcodes Group, serving in this role and the industry for over 15 years. During this time, Tim has worked with small, medium, and large enterprise customers, frequently working in vertical segments such as retail, logistics and warehousing, healthcare, and manufacturing. On a daily basis, he designs and troubleshoots with customers the system architecture for seamless integrations of hardware and software solutions, leveraging new technologies in the mobility space, including helping select the right option from an offering of dozens of MDM solutions. Thanks for joining us today, Tim. Please take it away. Thank you. All right, well, welcome everyone. And thank you again for taking the time to join us today. Uh, to begin, I'd really like to outline the objectives in our session today. First off, I wanna highlight the risk an unmanaged device could pose to your enterprise. Next, we'll try to demonstrate the value of an MDM and highlight some of the tools provided to help you increase security and, and lower some of those overhead, uh, excuse me, lower the costs on some of those overhead tasks. Uh, in the process, I'll try to highlight some of the qualifiers to be, be aware of when, when selecting an MDM. And next, we'll share some ideas on how barcodes and our true support services can also increase the value of your implementation. And as Edwin said, uh, lastly, we'll, we'll try to leave some time at the end for uh, any uh, questions and uh, hopefully answers as well. Next slide, please. Great. So before we dive into the core content, I want to provide a little bit of context on some of the many acronyms you'll hear in the market today. I'm really going to highlight three ac acronyms, uh, starting with MDM. So what is MDM? MDM stands for Mobile Device Management. Really, we want to think of this as the device-centric management, uh, or a rather a device-centric management tool that simply provides the ability to configure, deploy, and, and manage policies centered around the device. Again, device-centric. This is really the most widely used acronym. And obviously we're going to use this quite a bit today. Next up is EMM or Enterprise Mobility Management. This is the next evolution, taking everything from MDM and application management, as well as content and security management into a single solution. Uh, when you think about it, if you think about the platforms in the marketplace today, this is where Apple and Android really come into the conversation as well. And lastly, UEM, this is Unified Endpoint Management. It's really the current buzzword, the current acronym that many solutions are catering to today. Uh, this can include all types of platforms from IoT to PCs and laptops, and of course the, the mobile devices, which are everywhere these days. Uh, due to changes in the operating systems, uh, consolidating, consolidating management into one solution is is easier than ever before. And the benefits span from a lower cost of ownership to flexibility of choosing what operating systems to support and utilize. Next slide, please. Great, so let's talk about why MDM is important in five points here. So first off, an unmanaged mobile device is a huge security risk. One of the greatest benefits of an MDM tool is the improv excuse me, improved security practices it provides to the enterprise. An unmanaged mobile device connecting to an enterprise network can present a security vulnerability. Devices brought into your enterprise environment by users are typically manually provisioned, and there's really no assurance that the end user has properly set up any sort of local authentication, much less uh, the appropriate authentication to properly access your enterprise network resources. So now let's consider a user population, and suddenly the number of unmanaged devices easily multiplies. So an unmanaged mobile device population with multiple interfaces, which are very smart devices, uh, introduces a wide variety of possible entry points for malicious actors. So 
That said, with an MDM solution, security can be deployed to every single device within the enterprise network, and protocols can be established to take action in the presence of really any, any suspected security threat. In addition to this, MDM can be used to make sure the underlying platform is up to date with the latest software patches. Next, MDM can really help lower costs. So management capabilities offered by an MDM can help you lower some of those capital costs specifically. One way of doing so is enabling users to bring their own hardware into your environment. Uh, this is commonly called BYOD, to bring another acronym into play here, or bring your own device. Uh, enterprises save costs by allowing users to bring their own device, as opposed to issuing a corporate owned device. And management of these BYOD devices allows you to select security requirements while saving costs. Uh, these cost savings come in addition to other benefits that serve the company's bottom line. So think about increased productivity and freed up time and resources. And we'll dig into some of that ROI a little bit later. Next, we've got improved workflow and flexibility. Bottom line, just think of an MDM as a tool to control and manage the deployment of technology that makes your enterprise run efficiently. In addition to this, we've got the ability to simplify internal IT demands. So overhead tasks like firmware and configuration management are an ongoing burden for IT staffs, but as we all know, it's entirely necessary. An MDM can really streamline these tasks through a simple comprehensive platform and reduce the support burden while effect, excuse me, effectively managing the enterprise network. So by investing into MDM, an organization makes its IT department more productive, better able to do their job in a sense. Lastly, we can free up the enterprise workforce. So given the great advancements in infrastructure technologies, and even some external factors like COVID-19, what we've experienced for the last 18 months or so, more employees are working remotely, more employers are actually offering that as a benefit to employees to come over to their company as well. Well, an MDM platform can be used to build the framework for the management of the mobile technologies that enables remote work. So more specifically, an MDM will enable enterprises to extend critical resources while also extending the security practices, security standards that protect the content and really limit the vulnerabilities. Next slide, please. So we'd like to have a quick poll to understand your current position here. Uh, Edwin's gonna bring a poll up on the screen here. Simply put, how many of you are using an MDM today? So we'll leave this poll up please go ahead and answer. And uh, as, as we're doing this, I'll go ahead and provide some, some additional uh, content here. So security continues to be a big topic for many companies. Mobile devices are now running more modern operating systems, lots of memory and CPU horsepower that really only a few years ago were only found in our own desktops. Um, that said, IT is also being asked to quickly support the rapid speed of change. So this implies rollout of new connected devices on varying versions of mobile platforms for mobile use cases. So think of a bring your own device scenario or a corporate owned single use scenario. Now this effectively equates to more pathways to entry and certainly raises concerns over malicious players and data privacy. So the end result is rising security and compliance needs. Now IT admins need the ability to efficiently handle updates and patches all while ensuring the right versions of applications are on the right devices. An MDM can certainly enable all of this. So let's go ahead and close the poll, Edwin, and, and uh, see where we're at here. Great, great. So not surprised to see a ton of yeses and some noes out there. Um, I think a key takeaway from this, uh, if your answer was no, is why are you not using an MDM solution today? Um, and really for those who answered yes, uh, hopefully we can try to present some ideas to uh, help better utilize the BMDM uh, in your environment a little later on in this presentation. Next slide, please. All right. So as you can imagine, the MDM marketplace is growing exponentially. Endpoint technologies are growing fast. And with the inclusion of smart devices or sensors or anything that can run an operating system and be called an IoT device, all of these can be managed under one pane of glass, one solution. So within your enterprise, it's important to understand that 
what you'll be supporting today, um, but also try to understand maybe the near-term vision of your enterprise technology needs. So think about today, trying to think about tomorrow as well. Next slide, please. Great. So now we've really established a good understanding of why MDM is required. First, we need security enforcement. We also need to extend enterprise resources to our customers, to our user base. And lastly, we need to ensure hardware and any dedicated applications are available and ready to work at all times. So this is really a great opportunity to look at how we address those needs through some of the functional and business benefits of MDM. So first off is remote management. You know, generally speaking, an MDM is just a tool set that enables remote management. MDM enables policy management at the group level, and this eliminates the need and uh, the need for and even the confusion created by a simple one-off config. So the idea is we want to establish a uniform configuration for all cases or uh, rather all use cases and, and all device types. And I will say from an SE perspective, from a troubleshooting and maintenance perspective, this certainly makes everyone's life a heck of a lot easier. Next, we use our MDM to mitigate and enforce, excuse me, mitigate risk and enforce security policy. So this can come in multiple flavors. It can be something as simple as say, creating a kiosk menu to streamline access to core applications. It could be as complex as creating a geofence to only enable access to corporate content when the hardware is within the corporate facility. Or even as we alluded to earlier, uh, the MDM can be the method to properly provision hardware with the credentials that will really grant access uh, to those network resources. Next, we see increased productivity. So through a single pane of glass, we can prepare hardware to really better enable users, regardless of their operating system platform, regardless of their location, or even their proximity to technical resources. The idea here is we can maximize uptime by extending configuration and support resources out to the edge. That's really what an MDM is going to enable us to do. Lastly, we can look at flexible resourcing and think of flexible resourcing in terms of uh, support burden. So an MDM helps establish a support standard for each use case from an application, a communications and a, a firmware management standpoint. We can simplify the hardware or rather the employee onboarding process and we can do so really depending on the platform using some of the widely available tools out there from, for example, Google and Android. So Google offers their zero touch enrollment. Uh, Apple offers their device enrollment program. The idea being we can simplify that onboarding process to uh, uh, from factory default to a simple scan of a barcode to enroll that device and thus enable resources accordingly. Next slide, please. Oh, great. This is a great statistic. So with all these benefits, what's the ROI? So third-party research has shown that organizations can save up to $230 per device using MDM. It's really not too hard to find the savings. Let's just take a little deeper dive and see if we can pull some of this out. So first off, think of the remote service or the remote support aspect. So we've got faster service, given all devices can be managed remotely, meaning no travel time to reach that particular asset, get your hands on it and start to configure it. We've simplified the deployment process. And in fact, that deployment process is also accomplished remotely. So not only did we ease the process, we've made it such that you can be a remote resource doing that process. This ultimately leads to less shipping between sites or users. And the idea is it translates to more uptime. So ultimately, a decreased support burden translates to less labor for deployments cost savings. Next, we've got the configuration aspect. An MDM really enables consistent configuration. Uh, going back to my uh, point previously where an MDM allows us to build a, a compliance by site or by use case or by device type. Uh, the idea is when we build up this configuration by device type, by use case, it can ultimately translate to easier support or a faster resolution. And and again, think of that consistent configuration as an SE. I'll tell you that uh, we see more issues stemming from inconsistencies in the configuration than most anything else. Next, think about the asset visibility or the analytics behind those assets. So MDM gives us better metrics on device util utilization. 
So for example, maybe we find that only a percentage of the deployed hardware is actually used. We can find cost savings and even downsizing our fleet if we needed to. Okay. This can also translate to a loss prevention tactic. So we can put policies in place to actively track a device location and in some cases, even know who the last user was. Okay. So now we're, we're preventing the asset from being lost, there's savings there. Now, how about the data protection and compliance aspect of things? And it's really hard to put a price on this, but uh, an MDM is going to enable us to enforce even local device encryption. Uh, those types of policies are going to protect that device data. We could take it a step further. We could enable some hardening measures or for example, a, a remote wipe if a device fails to report or maybe it's been reported outside of its respective geofence. The device is being used in a place it shouldn't be used. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to find these savings just looking at some of the basic MDM features. Next slide, please. So as platforms have evolved, the mobile device management options have multiplied. So today we have a, a sea of options with varying scope of support for these ever evolving platforms. Some admittedly are platform specific. Now, if you're going through this selection process, as you evaluate these options, really the, the top priority is to address today's needs, but again, deployments generally don't shrink. So consider your use, use cases today and, and where it might grow. Again, think back to what we can manage. We can manage a full-blown PC, we can manage a Mac OS device, we can manage an iOS device, an Android device, a Linux device, an IoT device, so on and so forth. So we frequently see enterprises who have adopted an MDM solution just for a single use case. Think of a, a BYOD use case where users are bringing their device into your environment or even a corporate owned single use application. Now, selecting an MDM solution that only accommodates a single use case can really create major challenges down the road as use cases grow and as new technologies are adopted. In some cases, an MDM solution is a one trick pony, uh, meaning it can only accommodate a, a single use case or a single MDM. It's a purpose built device management solution in that sense. Now, this isn't always a negative. In fact, uh, some of the dedicated MDM solutions on the market are really very good at what they do, but again, they're dedicated, they're limited to what they can do. So you have to consider the impact of deploying a siloed solution in that sense and really be prepared to adopt alternate management options down the road. Next slide, please. All right, well, let's lay out some of the variables that might come into play as you go through this selection process. And um, you know, beyond the functional needs, you also need to consider some of the internal factors as well as some of the external factors. So internally, we want to consider your current subscription services and what's included with those services. Okay, you may already be paying for a, a device management functionality that you don't even use. So consider what platforms you're using today. Are you supporting legacy platforms like Windows CE? So most all EMMs out there offer support for iOS and Android today, but some also offer support for some of those legacy platforms. In fact, we also have platforms that support things like Linux or that IoT management, or even Chrome OS for that matter. Also consider that hardware use case. So are you issuing devices to end users in that corporate owned single use model? Or are you allowing users to bring devices into your environment? Again, Apple and Google have protocols in place to uh, help you really adapt to that. So um, in addition to this, we wanna consider what security standards you might have, place, have in place in your organization or, or what are those compliance goals you might have? Okay, and MDM can help us reach those goals. And lastly, what types of apps are we supporting and how are those apps distributed? Um, this all comes into play in the selection process. That app point is, is uh, somewhat nuanced there. Now externally, what's going on in the MDM marketplace? Okay, what, what mergers and acquisitions have taken place and what are those implications for the, the roadmap of that particular product? Okay, it's a very competitive market. We see OEMs and developers under, undergo mergers and acquisitions all the time. <laughs> and this could ultimately affect your hardware support roadmap as well as any corresponding costs. And that said, speaking of costs, we need to consider some of the licensing models with each solution. So just as an MDM is capable of scaling to meet management needs, really the financial model needs to scale to justify the purchase. And then lastly, free, as in included in another software package, 
may not always mean functional. There's a lot of solutions on the market that do offer basic MDM functionalities at little or no cost, or maybe feature, maybe it's a feature built into another product that you may already su subscribe to. But again, free does not always mean functional and, and a free solution may not accommodate your use case. So oftentimes some of the more robust EMM tools on the market are those that have solid relationships with OEMs or device manufacturers. With these relationships, we get more robust management capabilities. And this is really an example of functional, but not free, okay? Now, as you're evaluating this, um, most MDMs will offer a free trial. So we really highly recommend taking advantage of this offer. You say, test those solutions against your hardware, your applications, your support use case. Make sure you enforce the security policies required to help you achieve those compliance goals. Make sure the deployment methods fall in line with your operational and security protocols. And if you've taken all of these factors into account, this is really going to help a stakeholder sign off. Again, though, most all EMMs, all MDM functions out there, um, excuse me, all MDM utilities out there typically do offer a free trial. And again, we, we do highly recommend you take advantage of this. Make sure it falls in line with your use case. Okay, so as we wind down, I really want to highlight some of the standard features offered in most MDM solutions and demonstrate for you how we can help bridge the gap and complement some of these MDM some of these MDM deployments with, with our own managed services. So first off is remote device management. You know, once devices are enrolled in the MDM platform, the MDM platform allows you to remotely change certain aspects, even remote control. So um, a device that's been enrolled into your particular uh, utility here, uh, again, the policy is controlled through the MDM solution, but access into the individual device, the ability to remote into that device, take control of it and see what the user is seeing is a pretty common feature these days. Next, we've got security management. So these are remotely controlled settings and they're often grouped together in something called a profile. And this profile could dedicate restrictions on the device. And in some cases, the OS will allow us to remotely wipe the device in case that device is lost or stolen. From an application management perspective, we can deploy custom apps, we can deploy public apps, um, and we can even control application licensing through that particular MDM. Now, on top of that, little twist here, some application settings can even be centrally controlled. So think of deploying a browser um, and deploying some web filtering content with that browser, dictating what websites are whitelisted, what websites may be blacklisted, for example. And lastly, asset tracking. For some devices, advanced location can be enabled and data, data can be passed centrally right back to that MDM solution so we can see where all our assets are at one time. Now on the right side of the screen, we've got a slew of services that can be paired with these solutions uh, really to help you, uh, help you through that deployment. So uh, first off is remote deployment and provisioning with the right centralized configuration and a few steps done on each device, remote deployment can take place and uh, simply uh, turn on the device from factory defaults and follow a few steps, something as simple as scanning a barcode. Next, we have our own help desk services. Our help desk services can complement your help desk uh, with the possibility of remotely controlling or even securely accessing those devices wherever it might be located. So again, we can, we can help bridge that gap on the help desk side. From a repair or a spare pool aspect, we do offer logistic services to assist uh, to assist with and really reduce the downtime and ensure that those company devices are operational and, and also continuously managed. Okay. And, and lastly here, we're here to assist with the, the setup and maintenance of an MDM solution. So we offer a wide, excuse me, a wide array of services to consult, set up, install, and manage your MDM solution, uh, really enabling you to get the most out of your MDM software. Together, you may hear about the marriage of these two as MDM as a service, also a feature we offer here. Next slide, please. So we hear from many customers looking for help, trying to understand usage requirements, narrow down MDM options and requirements, and we can help with these processes. So as you see in this slide, we offer services surrounding all aspects of mobile computing deployments. The bottom line is we want to be your partner in this process whether we're looking at a net new deployment or even just stepping in, stepping in to help with one aspect of the actual deployment, this is our specialty. 
So please feel free to reach out to me. I've got my contact information listed on this slide, more than willing to help. Next slide, please. Oh, that's it. And with that, really, uh, thank you for attending today's session. I, I think this uh, puts us in a good spot for some Q&A. Yeah, thanks very much, Tim, for sharing your insights. This was, uh, this was wonderful. Now, Tim mentioned reporting and analytics at the end of his presentation, and this will be the topic of our October webinar. So please keep an eye out for the invitation, which will come to you by email over the next few weeks. Now, if you would like to explore how to select and optimize your mobile device management solution, please reach out to Tim or any of the Barcodes Group entities listed on the screen. If you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A box and we will be able to address those right now. And the first one that came in uh, relates, Tim, to the separation of corporate data and, and users' personal data. So if you enroll, a, as you call the BYOD device into an MDM, now does that require the enrolled device to initiate a wipe, reset, factory reset, um, so the corporate data can be separate from the user's personal data? How do you go about that? Uh, yeah, short, short answer is no. And there's actually a few different models. Um, there's BYOD, which is bring your own device where an end user is bringing their device to your environment. You are allowing them to enroll and thereby extending some resources to them. We don't need to factory reset for that specifically. There is another model called corporate owned personally enabled. Um, I believe that model does require a factory reset, but generally speaking uh, uh, to the question here, uh, BYOD, uh, as you're extending resources to device through BYOD, we do not need to factory default the device to maintain that separation between corporate and personal data. Right. Second one here is zero touch part of what you do? A fantastic question. Absolutely. Uh, so Barcodes is a zero touch certified reseller, which implies that uh, most any Android device that's uh, uh, supporting zero touch today, uh, uh, we are basically able to pre-enroll that device into the, uh, we'll say the, the Android mothership. We're, we're able to inform Google of the purchase of a, a new device um, uh, and associate that device with your enterprise instance such that when you take the device out of box, the first thing it does is it phones home to Google services and Google services points it towards your EMM. So just to recap, yes, we do offer uh, zero touch enrollment on the, the Android side today. Um, and of course, on the iOS side, uh, this is something we can accomplish as well through that, that DEP program uh, uh, via Apple Business Manager. And so you have an existing fleet of devices, let's say, how, how do devices get onboarded into the MDM platform? Another great question. So going back to that past, excuse me, previous question, um, zero touch enrollment is one option. Again, that's where we claim the device or rather inform Google of the device such that it can be claimed by you as soon as it's booted up. That is one option. Um, another option for onboarding into an MDM is as simple as a scan to configure. So as we build out your MDM, we build the onboarding process. Um, at the end of the day, what that looks like is we create a 2D barcode that 2D barcode can then be scanned by any one of these Android devices from factory defaulted. And at that point, it attempts to enroll in your MDM. Well, fantastic, Tim. The, this is all the time we have. We've reached the bottom of the hour. So I uh, do want to thank you for, for sharing your insights. And also, I appreciate the audience for attending today. Thank you very much. And I see you at the next webinar. Bye-bye. Thank you.